Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Faced here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to give me a follow there. And today, let's talk temperature blanket. Now, one person, one singular person held me to my March update, which I did not do. Today is April 18th and I am sorry, but since that person did comment, I am here to deliver. And this is my temperature blanket 2021 through April 10th, I believe, and I'm holding it the wrong way, but I keep it rolled up because it's easy to store that way, obviously, because this is beginning to get quite large. So here is our color story so far. This is January 1st all the way to about April 10th. I'm about a week behind right now. Um, as you can see, we started out the year actually unseasonably cold. I'm in the Midwest again. I'm just outside of Chicago. I'm going to be moving to the city in a month. Um, so we'll see if that affects anything. I doubt it will temperature wise. We had a very cold February. As you can see, the, the dark blue is my coldest color. And then into March, we had some variation, got up to the 50s. Um, this is Fahrenheit, obviously. And then I had some very warm temperatures in the beginning of April, even got up to 70 somehow. And April normally is like that there's a ton of fluctuation, like this week it's supposed to snow, but last week we had a day in the 70s. So that's just pretty standard, but it does create a pretty nice pattern. Yeah. So this is my chart. Let me remind you that I am keeping my yarns on this cardboard piece and with my temperatures right here. I'm kind of second guessing these top three colors next to each other. It's definitely not right on the Roy G. Bim scale. I don't know why I did that. And I'm not super psyched to use this orange color. I kind of wish it was like a hot, dark, magenta y pink instead of an orange, but then it wouldn't make sense that it's light pink, yellow, dark pink, but I don't know. I guess they look fine together. Let me know what you guys think if I should change it because probably won't get to 95 and up for another few months. So whatever. But yes, yeah, so like I mentioned, I'm about a week behind. I tend to catch up one day over the weekend just because that's what I have time to do. And most of the time um, I'm working on other projects and this is something I like to do. Not necessarily a row at a time, but like a bunch of rows at once. That's just what's been working for me. Um, and then I'll show you my system for keeping track of what's been going on. So because I don't like to do it day by day, I've been keeping track of what has been happening daily on this little index card. And then once I fill it up, I just toss it. But I have here like the date, the number, and then um, the day of the week, and then what amount of degrees, what the daily average temperature it was that day. And then I write them out for the days that have actually happened. And then when I do the row, I cross it off, as you can see. So I'm not necessarily having to count all the way from the bottom of the blanket to the top to be like, oh, did I do April 9th? I can just tell on here because I don't have like dividers for um, the end of January, the end of February. So I don't necessarily know what day I'm on by looking at the blanket, but I do because I have this handy dandy tracking card, okay? So yeah, this has been something that's really been working for me. I did mention this to the people who are in my Instagram group chat and we're all making the blankets. Just like a heads up, this is what's been working for me and everyone's kind of got their own system going on. Some people are very diligent and doing it every day. And then some people are just keeping track um, and getting to it when they get to it. So if you are not in that Instagram group chat and would like to, please send me a DM on Instagram and I will put you in it. It's as easy as that. I'm at Let's Get In It Faced there. So if you want to be in it, we just kind of talk about what's been working, what's not, um, what we would be doing differently, and just kind of help each other out along the way. You'll see that I also have all this fringe. These are not necessarily the ends of the rows because as you can see like when I do multiple rows of a color there's no ends there so what I've been doing is I've been cutting like a four or five inch strip of yarn and then I just tie it into the end to create some more fringe because I do like the look of it being a little bit denser and then obviously there's like a gap here so that doesn't really work out for me but um, I've just been adding it in and then I think it helps hide mistakes I have made with like my not so clean ends. I guess I'm not as good as crocheting as I thought I was because look like how 
I just can't really see how lopsided some of them are. I've gotten better in the recent the recent days of keeping like a nice straight edge, but like down here it's very wayward. So um, and then sometimes when I'm not paying attention, what will happen is I will attach my yarn and begin working from the wrong end. That's happened a couple times. Bet you didn't think I could be that stupid, but it's true. So like I've added a row here, which is January, and then it doesn't really make sense with the color scheme because it's supposed to be going here. So that's something that's been happening. Um, and I've just had to like pull it out and start over. Um, so I've been much more careful about that. And then you can see, I think something with crocheting, well actually no, something with crocheting is that you have to pay attention to what side you finish on. So if I finish here, right, I'm, I'm crocheting and this is my end, and then I roll it up and I don't touch it for four days. If I start crocheting on like this side, like way over here, it's going to be a problem because it's not going to show the same pattern um, as if you picked right off where you ended. And you can see that that's something that happened to me. And I didn't really notice it till it was too late. In the middle of this, you can see in this middle patch of green, you see how there's kind of like a break in the pattern? That's what happened there. So it's like very minor, but also I notice it a lot and I wish I didn't mess it up, but I did. And this is like way too much to, to pull out. And I don't think it'll be super noticeable when the whole blanket's done, but you can see it's very minor. But you see how there's like a couple more gaps in there that should be, and then the rest is pretty cohesive. So just, just a thought, if you're crocheting your blanket and you're not necessarily being super careful about how you're leaving it and you're just going back to it, look out for that. I've been rolling it up when I'm done with a row and then leaving the outside piece as like the place I'm supposed to start. So I always know, okay, this is on the outside. I'm good to go to start here and I won't mess up the rest of the blanket. So yeah, that's really it. Um, sorry I didn't give the update on time. I don't really have an excuse but I am going to be posting more on YouTube um, more regularly like I was throughout the winter. And I will definitely update you guys, if not on YouTube, on my Instagram, I am posting almost a monthly update. So um, if you're really interested in following along, please follow me there. And then I will try to do a Q2, like a first half of 2021 update um, at the end of June. You can hold me to that. I will be better about posting it more on time. Um, just to let you know what I'm thinking about, what else I've learned. And yeah, we'll have some warmer colors in by then. I'll let you know if I've decided to get rid of that orange. Let me know what you think about that. And if you're still wanting to join that group chat, like I said, please send me a DM. But other than that, like, subscribe. I'll see you later.